This is what he directed to be written on his tombstone. This, and as he said, not a word more. Here was buried Thomas Jefferson, author of the Declaration of American Independence, of the Statute of Virginia for Religious Freedom, and father of the University of Virginia. Nothing about his having been President of the United States. He thought of that as just an honor he had once, to be for a time an employee of the people. He wasn't interested in honors. He was interested in liberty. Don't look for him down here in the mists of the family graveyard. Up on top of this hill, in the sunshine, he's still living. He was the architect of Monticello, but architecture was his pastime. Liberty was his passion. Walk around here where he lived and fought, and you can hear him on the subject of liberty. The God who gave us life gave us liberty at the same time. I have sworn upon the altar of God eternal hostility against every form of tyranny over the mind of man. You almost expect to find him up here, cultivating his begonias. He could raise flowers. He could, a biographer wrote accurately, calculate an eclipse, survey an estate, tie an artery, plan an edifice, try a cause, break a horse, dance a minuet, play a violin. Never mind. He gave up all those pursuits to pursue liberty. He wrote, I have such reliance on the good sense of the body of the people that I am not afraid of their letting things go wrong to any length in any cause. He believed in us. Maybe that's why we feel that he is still with us somehow. Would he be on the side of black people and poor people trying to gain their civil rights today? Beyond a doubt. Would he support women trying to achieve the same rights as men? We can be sure of it. Liberty was his work. On the wall of his study hangs his plan for the University of Virginia to be built down the hill from Monticello. If a nation expects to be ignorant and free, he wrote, it expects what never was and never will be. He founded the university as an act of liberty. Thomas Jefferson wrote the Declaration of Independence as a red-haired young man of 33. Over the years, he changed his mind about many things but not about liberty. As a white-haired old man of 83, he cared about nothing else so much. The 50th anniversary of the 4th of July was coming and was much on Jefferson's mind. The mayor of Washington sent him an invitation to attend. On June 24th, 1826, Jefferson sat down here and took his pen in hand to write that he was too old and weak to accept. There was nothing old and weak about that letter. It was a democratic outburst, as clear as a liberty bell. The mass of mankind, he wrote, has not been born with saddles on their backs, nor the favored few booted and spurred to ride them legitimately by the grace of God. It was a youthful letter, full of power. It might have been the first thing he ever wrote. As it turned out, it was the last. He wanted to live until the 4th of July, and he did. Fifty years to the day after the Declaration of Independence, having said all he had to say to us, which was enough, Thomas Jefferson died on this bed, a free man. On that same day, a few hours later, away to the north in Massachusetts, John Adams, also old and weak, also satisfied to have lived until the 4th, also died. His last words were, Thomas Jefferson still lives. You were right about that, Mr. Adams.